Ernan, I'm not embarrassed to say that I really do search for God. Does God exist? And I have looked somewhat carefully at a lot of the classical arguments for the existence of God, and I find that most of them are rejected even by philosophers of religion. Right. The one that seems to be the most residual or the most virulent, some yeah. would say, is the so-called argument from design, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. teleological argument right. that there seems to be an end for these purposes. Right. How do you look at it? Well, to begin with, I, I am a little uneasy about the current uses of the argument from design because it postulates uh, some feature of the universe, some specific feature of the universe, possibly within the evolutionary tradition, for example, which requires a special action on, on part of the creator. Now, I, I simply don't, don't find that profitable. My notion of creation is such that God brings the universe to be in a single act of creation, and it is the way that God wants it to be right from the beginning. God doesn't have to, as it were, you slip in a mosquito here and an elephant there or anything like that. Augustine, the greatest theologian of the early church, insisted that one had to suppose that the creator of a, a transcendent creator of a universe made the universe from the beginning with the possibilities of all the kinds of things that would come later, including the human body, by the way, he said. So uh, this, is, this is now writing in the fifth century. Okay, now, so that from that point of view, uh, the focus on design uh, is relatively modern, at least in one way. That is to say, um, it's true that in the medieval Christian tradition, among the many ways in which pe people uh, approached uh, this, uh, the whole issue of uh, God's existence, one way, often associated with Aquinas, uh, is an argument from design, as it was called. But what, what that meant was that the universe, as Aristotle saw it, had within it a kind of purposiveness, in the, not in the sense, not for Aristotle in the sense of mind, but rather an adjustment of means to end, that the different kinds of things seem to, as it were, naturally act for the good of that kind. Now, Aquinas, when he looked at that issue, said, the only way in which I can understand that is to suppose that the universe from the beginning was such that, for example, animals... Uh, in particular animals, will in fact, by instinct and by structure, be proper for their own environment, will act, will lay eggs at the right time of year, will, so to speak, and so on. All of that uh, in detail, that seems to require a designer. Now, of course, what happened in the 17th century was a little different, because in the 17th century, there was a, 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 a great... Uh, falling off in religious belief, a growth of atheism and so on, uh, uh, in, in many ways tied with the coming of science, I suppose. But at any rate, what, what happens then is that those working with the living world, uh, people like Robert Boyle, for example, John Ray and others, looking at the, at the living world, they said, look, as indeed Aristotle had said, there is, in fact, a kind of ad adjustment of means to end here, that, the, that the, the, the structures of living things seem to be just right for that kind of being, and the, uh, the behaviors, the instinctive behaviors in particular. Now, how could that be? Because these are not thinking beings. How do they know how to do the right thing? I mean, why do they do that? Okay, so a whole argument from design was constructed in that time, and it was a very good argument, because that was the best answer you could get at that time. And then, of course, Darwin comes along and says, well, I can give you a different answer. And Darwin's answer has turned out to be very persuasive. Now, that argument from design has collapsed. And so that line of thinking, it seems to me, is simply not profitable anymore. The only argument from design that I can see, or that's even remotely analogous to that, that would work today, I think, is to look at the conditions under which there should be a universe of this kind at all and to say that the universe as we have it is a very specific kind of universe. It's a life-bearing universe, and it turns out, according to the best science of today, that that's a very specific kind of... It has to have a lot of adjustments at the beginning. So, so in a it, sense, it is an argument from design, but not the way it's been traditionally exactly. used, and not the way it's currently used exactly. by most people. Exactly, exactly. Because you don't have God yeah. intervening on a regular basis. That's right. Traditionally, the argument design was a kind of standalone argument that if you look at, for example, living things, you must see that God has to be invoked and so on. 
I, I don't see this argument uh, as a standalone argument. It has to be taken in conjunction with a much more metaphysical argument, which is why there should be a universe at all. I mean, if you allow that question to be asked, if you, al if you allow it, and physicists block it sometimes, <laughs> But if you allow that question to be asked, then the argument from design takes a very comfortable place within it. But it's the argument from design yes. of original design. Yes, of original design. Initial conditions of exactly. the universe, not the, the intervention, the biological exactly. intervention to create exactly. different species. Exactly. I have no or... patience with so-called intelligent design because that's a, an act of desperation, so to speak. That's trying to, as it were, uh, revive pre-Darwinian argument. I don't see that that is going to go anywhere. Uh, and in fact, it can do some harm because it sets science against religion, and it, it, it has already done a lot of harm in the United States, in my view. On the other hand, the uh, initial argument from design, yeah. as you've postulated, yeah. the fine-tuning argument, how strong do you think that is? It's as strong only as the alter. See, you ha like any theory, uh, um, you have to look at what the alternatives are, and it's only as strong as the weakness of the alternatives, so to speak. Now, the alternatives here, you know, are possibly it's a chance, the universe being this way is a chance thing. Possibly we need more theory in order to explain the way it is. Or possibly, and this is the favorite among some scientists, possibly we have a, multi, a multiverse within which there are many, many, many universes and only one of the right kind or possibly a small number of the right kind uh, for, for, uh, for there to be human beings or living things generally. Now, that's, that's a possible answer. And the way in which, to my mind, one can get something of a resolution here would be if, in fact, that theory, the multiverse theory, could be converted into a fully scientific theory, which has not yet happened. I mean, there have been brave attempts at it, but it's not yet a fully worked out theory within which it's not simply a postulate. Uh, uh, if it can be worked into uh, a, a, a theory that, uh, that is credible in physics terms, it can make other predictions, for example, it's not just an ad hoc add-on, which is the way it sounds a bit at the moment, uh, then, in fact, it would decrease the, 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 the plausibility of that argument from design. Yeah, and I have some theists would say the opposite. They'd say, then, then we have God having the argument for design for a multiverse. Oh, yeah, but now, yeah, that, but now watch it, because you see, that's actually converting it into a different argument. <laughs> Uh, it's it's not uh, 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 so much uh, w what we would need would be a reason for the existence of the multiverse, but of course design only plays a small part in it, right?